So I wanted to make one more video utilizing the Revolution tool, but this time I want to use the axis a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and hit New and go to Standard Part. And let's start a new sketch on our XY plane. And go ahead and grab your Circle tool, lock it onto the center, and tell it to be 1 inch in diameter. Then I'm going to select my Line tool. And instead of drawing my line through the center, I'm actually going to draw it off to the side. And I want it to be a vertical line. And if you notice, if you get it close to vertical, it'll magnetize and be vertical. You can even see a little constraint pop up saying this line is vertical. And so if I click, this line is now stuck as a vertical line. But if I mess it up, so I'm going to hit undo and select my line again. And this time I'm going to draw my line not vertical. So let's say we messed it up. I'll hit escape on my keyboard. We can just add that vertical constraint after the fact by selecting vertical constraint and then selecting our line. Right click OK. Now you'll notice this sketch is not fully constrained. It says we still have three dimensions needed. And that's kind of obvious. This line can be moved around. We can change its size. But actually, before we finish constraining the sketch, let's go ahead and play with the revolve feature. Let's go to finish sketch and hit revolve. And you'll notice it automatically selected our profile. So all we need to do is select the axis. And you can kind of see what happens. If I hit the home button, you can see that our profile of our circle revolves around that axis that we drew off to the side of our circle. I'm going to hit cancel. And I'm going to go back into this sketch and edit it. And I'm going to move this line a little bit further out and hit finish sketch hit the home button to center and I'm gonna revolve this circle around this axis again and you'll notice something different happened if I hit the home button it is a much wider revolution and that makes sense because this axis becomes our radius it is what we are revolving around and so I'm gonna make it a full rotation and hit OK but then I'm gonna go back into the sketch and edit it and to do that I'm gonna go over here to my browser click the plus sign next to my revolution right click and edit the sketch and now I'm gonna move my line way closer to my circle and hit finish sketch and you can see what happens differently is now we have this sort of donut shape and so I'm gonna go back into the sketch again right click and edit it and you can play around with the location of this line and see the different shapes it can make but I'm gonna add a dimension and I wanted to mention the distance between this line and this circle drag it down and I'm gonna type in a distance of five inches and zoom out so I can see what happened and finish my sketch and now you can see it's a wider revolution again and if you don't like that dimension you can always go back into that sketch and play with it we can change it from five inches to six inches for example and make it a little bit wider finish our sketch and see what happens it becomes a little bit wider okay that makes sense and I think I like it at this distance because I want to make it look like a sonic ring. One of those rings from the video game Sonic the Hedgehog. And so I'm going to go back into my sketch. And you might look at this and say both of my shapes are black. But this is not a fully constrained sketch. You can tell because it says there are still two dimensions needed. And so what those dimensions are, are the length of our line and the location of our line in the vertical direction. Now you'll notice that if I change either of those things and I finish my sketch, it doesn't change anything in my revolution. And so if we go back into our sketch, the length of this line and the location of this line in the vertical direction do not actually contribute to how the revolution works because the axis is still fundamentally the same. So in reality, we don't even need those dimensions, but we're going to go ahead and add them anyway because it's good practice to fully constrain your sketch. And so the first one I'm going to add is the size of this line. So I'm going to go to dimension. I'm going to click on my line and I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to tell this line to be two inches in length. I'm going to right click and hit OK and I'm going to make sure my line is centered with my circle. And you can see we still have one dimension needed. Well that other dimension is the vertical location of our line. So let's keep it centered. Let's hit dimension again. And this time let's click on the bottom of our line and the center of our circle and we'll drag it over here to the right. And you can see I can put down a distance between the bottom of our line and the center of our circle. I'm going to click and type in one inch. 
And now we have a fully constrained sketch. I'm going to go ahead and go to finish. And now if I hover over sketch one, you can see it says fully constrained right underneath my mouse. And so the last thing I want to do is decorate this to look like an actual sonic ring. And so I'm going to go to tools, adjust. I'm going to select my ring and I'm going to go into materials and I'm going to find gold. And I'm going to make it gold metal. Hit check. And then I'm going to go to file, save as and call it what it looks like, at least what it looks like to me. I'm going to call it a sonic ring. And hit save. And we are done with this shape.